Okay, so in this video, we will discuss the comparison test, but we might just as well call this the comparison idea, as we're about to see that both cases are simple consequences of the discussion from our previous video. And let's recall this intuition, as both cases again will be simple consequences of this intuition. And the intuition was, if you recall, when you have a series of positive terms, there are only two possibilities. The series is either finite or infinite. If it is finite, it converges. If it is infinite, it diverges. As when you're considering a series of positive terms, as you add more and more terms, the sum gets larger and larger and larger. So the result is either bounded or unbounded. If it is bounded, we have convergence by the monotone convergence theorem. If it is unbounded, it grows arbitrarily large, therefore blows up to infinity. So you can turn this around. If you have a series of positive terms and you want to show it converges, all you have to show is that it is finite. If you have a series of positive terms and you want to show it diverges, all you have to show is that it is infinite. And this is the reasoning we'll apply in both cases here to show that they are very intuitive, which is why I said in the beginning, we might just as well call this the comparison idea and not the comparison test. So here's the first assumption. We assume that we have two sequences, a n and b n, and the two sequences are non-negative. So a1, b1 are non-negative, a2, b2 are non-negative, and so forth. So when we look at the series of Bn and the series of An, we are summing positive or non-negative terms, so we can apply the intuition from our previous video. So here's part A. So if An is less than Bn for every n, and the series of Bn converges, then automatically the series of An also converges. If, on the other hand, a n is larger than b n for every n, and the series of b n diverges, then automatically the series of a n also diverges. And what you will see from the intuition in both cases is you don't even need to remember these two statements. They are both so intuitive that you're much better off understanding the intuition and completely forgetting these two statements. So hopefully this will become clear in a few minutes. So let's look at the intuition behind part A. We are saying quite simply that A n is no bigger than B n. So A1 is less than B1, A2 is less than B2, A3 is less than B3, and so forth. So let's look now at the corresponding series. If we add a n from 1 to infinity, this will be clearly less than or equal to adding up the larger terms from 1 to infinity. And this should be very clear. If every term here is larger than every corresponding term here, then a sum of larger terms must be larger than a sum of smaller terms. So this should be very intuitive. Second, the other assumption is that the series of Bn converges. What does that mean? It means that this series is finite. If a series converges, then the infinite sum yields a real number. So this series is finite, strictly less than infinity. And I'll picture this on the real line. You have a series for a n, and the terms are assumed to be at least zero, so you're adding up non-negative numbers, the result is at least as big as zero, and because this series is assumed to converge by assumption, it's just some real number. So it's some finite number onto the real line. But now, the series of a n is at least zero, and at most 
this value. So clearly, the series of an is bounded between 0 and the value of the series of bn. So this series must be finite, as again it is strictly less than infinity. But if a series of positive terms or non-negative terms, same thing, is finite, it converges, as it simply returns some real number. And that's it. Let's look at part B, and part B is equally simple. We assume that now the terms from the sequence AN are larger than the corresponding terms from the sequence BN. So of course if we add the larger terms, this will be larger than adding up the smaller terms. But what was the other assumption? That the series diverges, but the terms here are non-negative. So as you're adding more and more terms, b1 plus b2 plus b3 plus b4, the result gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But if a series of positive terms diverges, it can only do so by blowing up. As we have said before, we have the intuition now that a series of positive terms is either finite, hence converges, or if it diverges, it can only be infinite. So if the series diverges, it being a series of positive terms, it must do so by blowing up. But now the conclusion about the series of an is obvious. The series is at least as big as infinity, therefore it also blows up, therefore it diverges. And that's it. And so you see, you can really ignore the two formal statements and only concentrate on the intuition. If an is at most bn for every n, then the sum of the smaller terms will be at most the sum of the bigger terms. If this series is finite, then so is the series of an. But if you have a series of positive terms that is finite, it converges. Check. Now if an is larger than bn for every n, then the series of the larger terms will be larger than the series of the smaller terms. But if this series diverges, as it is a series of positive terms, it can only do so by being unbounded, therefore by blowing up. And so the larger series must be at least infinity, therefore blows up as well. And now the only question left here is hopefully now, well the intuition is very clear, but what's, or at least should be not so clear, is what's the point of this result? Well. The point is that sometimes you will begin with the series of an. And it will be a rather complicated series that you won't be able to attack directly. The idea is you'll try and compare the original series with one that is simpler. This will be the series of bn. And hopefully, the simpler series, you know what happens in this case. Either it is finite or it blows up. The one twist is you have to have the intuition to figure out whether the original series will converge or diverge, as if you think, if you suspect that this series converges, you will want to bound it above by a simpler series which is finite, which does converge, to prove convergence of the original series. If you suspect the series diverges, then you will want to bound the series below by a simpler series which you know diverges by blowing up to infinity, which will prove divergence of the original series. And you will develop this intuition as you work through some problems. And after a few examples, you should be able to develop a very good feeling for when a series converges and when a series diverges, because you need to have direction as to whether you bound the series above or you bound the series below but this will become clearer as we go through some examples.